alleged that Mr. Flores caused the death of Kristen Smart while in the commission of or attempted rape. That is first degree murder under California law. They were the words the Smart family had waited nearly 25 years to hear. Paul Flores, a fellow freshman, would be held to answer for the disappearance of their daughter, Kristen. The 19-year-old vanished from Cal Poly San Luis Obispo, Memorial Day, 1996, walking back from a party. Flores, the last to see Kristen alive. On Tuesday, Paul, now 44, was arrested at his home in San Pedro. His dad, Ruben, was arrested in Arroyo Grande. He's being charged as an accessory in the murder. Kristen's body has not been found. Today, the DA asked for the public's help, stating he thinks other women could have been sexually assaulted by Paul Flores. He said Flores frequented the bar scene in San Pedro since 2005. We do have evidence in this case that leads us to conclude that there very well may be additional victims in the Southern California area. So we would ask that anybody that may have had an experience with him that they have questions about, for them to reach out and contact law enforcement. Historically, it's tough to get a conviction without a victim's body. We spoke to a former federal prosecutor on how challenging it can be. Those cases are rare. Those no-body homicide cases are rare, but they do happen. So what the prosecution now has to do is show through circumstantial evidence that Miss Smart is not alive. You don't get a free pass because you're able to get rid of the body, and that's why, even though there is no body here, they can still proceed with the homicide. Well, a lot has happened in the last month or so in this case. 40 search warrants were reportedly issued, and there are 200 new pieces of evidence. What was the break in the case? Perhaps we'll get some hints tomorrow when both father and son are arraigned. And we're getting late-breaking news into the newsroom. The spokesperson said prosecutors did review a rape allegation against Flores brought by Redondo Beach Police in 2012, rather, but declined to charge him due to insufficient evidence. Alex and Coco. Uh, Laura, you know so well what a big case this was 25 years ago, but it really didn't go away because of the popularity of true crime, specifically one podcast, right? Yes, I, the fact that he kept on the case, and in fact, he was given credit yesterday at that news conference by sheriff's deputies saying that he stayed on the case. He actually brought new evidence and new potential witnesses forth, and that's what compelled them to go in and re-examine some key locations. And out of that, we saw yesterday the news conference by the sheriffs, and then today the DA actually saying that he will prosecute for murder. The reason there was no rape uh, charge brought forth was because back in 1996, because of the statute of limitations, mm. they couldn't be compelled to prosecute on that charge today. Wow.